So I've heard stories now of agents approaching players at ridiculous ages, you know, young as 10, 11, 12 year olds. What advice would you give to a parent? I actually get a lot of this, to be honest, and I would say to you, no one needs an agent. Everyone plays a part in a footballer's life from his parent. Mm -hmm. You won't want a parent, a, an agent to come up to you and tell you about your son. That's yeah. the hardest thing I find in the job is actually getting a mother and father to relinquish a little bit of control and put the trust in a stranger. Yeah. For me, I want that person to be experienced. I want that yeah. person to have done it before and show me proof of that. Mm -hmm. And then give the advice. The advice is free, should mm -hmm. always be free. But if you're an agent now, they get you to sign a document. Yeah and then that guarantees when they sign it. So if you don't decide to keep him for the next two years, they may get some money. Because again, I've had scenarios where an agent's had a football and he's taking 20 pounds a month from his basic salary. I swear to God, and the player he had at the time became famous throughout this country. And I don't think it'd be fair to so say the agent, but the player's name was Lamana Lua Lua. Fucking genius. Yeah. He was One of the brilliant best player. players I've ever worked with. Brilliant Tremendous. Player. And it brought, it brought different responsibilities for the agent, i.e. Mm. me, and the responsibility for the family that he was supporting. What's your limitation? I don't have one. I'm just here to give advice for free. Yeah. And if it makes that person or family a little bit clearer, and if they've got any doubts, they can ask. Because in the end, if you want to sign a contract for my company, it's because you trust me. Because I'm set up in Africa as well, I'm all over the place, I'll get inquiries and questions from all over the place yeah. and now we're in England and everybody wants to come to England because here if you sign a contract for three years you get your money for three years you can have a fucking migraine for six months you're still you gonna still get, get paid. your money you try doing that in Spain you try doing that in Germany or oh. Turkey you got no chance okay I didn't so know people, that. that's what I'm saying so your 12 year old yeah. may not matter because they can go and get the next best 12 year old from Spain right or from a tournament they saw in Norway, whatever, it's, 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 it's frightening it's, and it's massive. There's a lot going on that uh, a layman would never understand, you know what I mean? So when he gets to 16, yeah. scholar, 17 a year later, pro, and he may have two years of that guaranteed pro without actually working for it. It's not like my day yeah. where you'd like, I wouldn't give anyone more than one year, I don't care, he could be Maradona's fucking boy. Yeah, he he should work for it. Our Maradona had to work for it. So and Ronaldo had to work for it. You know, it's not... But if you want to retain this talent, you yeah. have to secure it. And that's what happens. So you're moving families across, you're moving... And clubs are investing millions of pounds into the talent. So it's, it's difficult. It's, there's a lot more to it, Joe, you know? It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's enormous. So obviously, you said you're set up in Africa. What's the difference between a player from a board in terms of their mentality than a player from these shores? I don't even think you have to go as far as overseas to see that. I think there's a difference in the north to the south in the mentality. No one likes a cockney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't take that from me, trust me. <laughs> Especially, in, not saying they don't like, but there, yeah. there is that little divide. You know, I've, I've had two years in Blackburn, trust me. I've had two yeah. years in Hull. I've, I've seen, you know, mentalities are different. I just think the athlete now is its lifestyle. You know, right. the game's moved on. You've got Instagram, you've got how many players now are in music videos and yeah. rap videos and, you know, grind videos and doing different things. They've got different interests. It's completely different. So what are the, what are the pitfalls being a modern day player? Not succumbing to the temptations out there, the, you know, and I don't think it's ever going to change. You, you, we've had nightclubs, we've had bars, we've had yeah. alcohol, we've had smoke, we've had drugs. These things haven't just appeared, have they? So mm. these are the pitfalls that someone says, I've got to leave my 10 mates because they're doing this and my job demands that I am totally focused on trying to become a professional footballer. You know, and that's very difficult if that player has already got his professional contract guaranteed at the age of 13. He already knows he'll be earning £3,000 a week at 18, perhaps £1,000 guaranteed. If you've got Tom who's playing in West London and Chelsea want him, Man City want him, Liverpool want him, well, you think he's going to listen to Chelsea? Go, well, there's only two. Well, Man United said there's four. And Man City said, well, there's six. Yeah. Well, where's he going to go? I actually loved the ones that were scholars before, hmm. got released. Now they're, now they're packing shelves. You find them, they're playing non-league football for fun. Yeah. And then they get the appetite back. And then I come along and go, oh, well, you've been in the system before. Yeah. Now I know if you get the chance, 
you are not gonna. You're not gonna let that go. No way. And you know what it's like to work nine till nine, perhaps on a late shift, and it's refreshing to see that because that's that's the world I grew up in. Yeah. You know, where it wasn't guaranteed. Where was I? I was a schoolboy at Fulham. Then I was poached by Crystal Palace under Terry Venables, and my mani immediate manager was George Graham. So I was 17 when I signed that. How was George Graham? Disciplined. Disciplined. Yeah, 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 and I remember, but he was a Palace player, so I. I was a schoolboy watching him play on a Saturday. It's my team, I still support him to this day, but yeah. he was just meticulous about everything. And he used to drop me off at Stratton Mill Station and he's under 80, I remember it was blue. Mm -hmm. And he dropped me off. Remember what I told you? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, see you tomorrow. Like, Cheers, gaffer. Yeah. That's it, and you know, I'm like, running down, like, fucking George Graham talking to me. I'm <laughs> 17, you know, it's yeah, yeah. meant something. It, like, it just made you believe that made you realise what you have to do to become a footballer and sustain it. I got released at Palace um, at the age of 18. You come in and have your little review, it's like, you've done very well, but not as good as you should have done. You've been released. Okay. And that hit me in the back of the head, but suddenly I got a call from Fulham, can you come across on a pre-season um, trial? And the guy at the time was uh, called Tony Banfield, saved my life. We went to Richmond Park and the first day was a fucking run through the park. It felt like it was a hundred degrees. <laughs> and he just said to me, don't come in past yeah. number six. There was like 38 pros or 40 pros. Just make sure you're in the top six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you were yeah. fucked. Okay. So I remember that in my head, just keep, <laughs> just, just keep, keep on, on fucking running. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. keep on going, keep going. And when I came in, he's like, not done. Yeah. And I signed on a Monday for 90 quid a week. Brilliant. That was my yeah. pro and I ended up being there two years and got capped for England while there, to be fair. Yeah. And then was told in December when I came back from Australia, we played the World Cup for England and um, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm McDonald stood me up in the breakfast room and said, oh, why not time you finish? And he's yeah. going off for England. He said, well, well done, because when you come back, you're getting released. This was fucking December. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> 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 fucking, the season don't finish till May. But I knew in December I wasn't getting another contract. Imagine that. How did they do that? Wow. He asked me what my ambition was, and I said to play for England. Yeah. He went, wrong. Should be for the first team. <laughs> That's it. And that was that? Fucking, that was they it. They made it. That was fine line, man. Fine line. 